Now, without further ado, let, let's welcome our project leader, Dr. Jerk A. Principe, to present the Project CNAG overview and updates for year two. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for joining us in the Project Sinag Colloquium 2023. So as the, uh, as the title suggests and the name suggests, it's uh, 2023. It's actually the second year of implementation for the project. And uh, we're happy to report to you uh, the achievements or accomplishments of the project as of uh, the end of its uh, second year. Next slide, please. So for the overview of the project, uh, Project CNAG stands for the Solar PV Resource and Installation Assessment using Geospatial Technologies. The project has started on August 2021 and supposed to be it has already ended last month, now July 31st, uh, 2023. But we are glad to inform you that uh, the DOST has already uh, granted our request for extension. Uh, so we uh, we were granted a six-month extension. That means that the project would be ending January 31st next year, 2024. Uh, owing to the many uh, expected out outputs that we have yet to uh, deliver, but uh, actually we have already delivered some interesting and successful uh, deliverables, but we would like to uh, finish it well. So we, we would like to also produce a lot of other outputs. Uh, the project is actually uh, funded under the auspices of the DOST M MOST Joint Research Program. So that's why we have, as part of our cooperating agencies, uh, some institutions in uh, China. So that's why we have uh, cooperating agencies like CMA, China Meteorological Agency, Public Meteorological Services, and the Beijing Giant Weather Company Limited. Also in the Philippines, we have cooperating agencies such as our Weather Bureau, Pagasa, Department of Energy, SUCs, and HEIs, as well as some uh, solar energy companies in the country. Next slide, please. Yes. Uh, for the next slides, I will be presenting some uh, outputs of the project so far. So we have here the solar PV resource potential maps uh, using two different uh, remotely sensed uh, data, specifically uh, remotely sensed solar radiation data. So at the left, uh, we have the uh, effective power PV uh, power PV potential in megawatts using uh, the Advanced Simuari Imager 8 shortwave radiation product. And at your right, we have uh, the same uh, uh, output map, but uh, this time using the uh, Chinese product, uh, the surface solar irradiance from the Pengyun 4A satellite. So as you can see, of course, they, they have some uh, difference in terms of the magnitude, absolute values of the magnitude of the uh, annual PV power potential. But you can see that uh, we have some consistency in terms of which areas in the countries have very large potential, especially as you can see in some parts of Mindanao eh, as well as in Visayas and in, in Luzon, there were some uh, very consistent, uh, have very consistent high potential for solar PV uh, resource. We have also produced uh, these maps, uh, taking into account the effects of meteorological factors, specifically the effects of uh, high temperature and dust. So as you can see here in, in the bar charts, we have uh, six, case studies wherein we can see that uh, uh, we have different amount of uh, decrease in PV power potential due to dust. 
in temperature or high temperature. For example, in Bataan, you would have a very high effects of uh, dust compared to, let's say, in Negros Occidental. So 16.64% of the uh, technical potential for solar PV power installations in Bataan uh, will be lost due to dust, whereas in Negros Occidental, it's only 3.57% of the potential will be lost due to the dust. Uh, for the effects of uh, temperature, we have the highest in Sultan Kudarat at 6.08 and uh, the lowest at the Occidental Mindoro at 2.55. So these are maps uh, for the uh, spatial distribution or showing the spatial distribution of the areas which exhibit uh, the decrease in solar cell efficiency due to temperature, the, the map on your left. And at your right, uh, we have the map for the range of the R RGB values. So the higher the R values, meaning you have higher uh, decrease in PB potential due to uh, the effects of dust deposition. The R value is the component of the air RGB model corresponding to high dust deposition of fine particle sizes. In the out solar component, we have already uh, uh, developed the different models for solar PB power output uh, forecasting. So, for example, here we have some case studies in Benguet, Double del Norte, and Negros Occidental. We have tested the Sarimax model, LSTM, and uh, the XGBoost model, as well as their uh, different hybrid models. Like for hybrid model HM1, we have uh, combined Sarimax and LSTM, HM2 for Sarimax and XGBoost, HM3 is the hybrid of LSTM and XGBoost, and HM4 is the hybrid of the three uh, mentioned models. As for their prediction accuracy, you can see here, uh, we have the highest uh, or the, the least amount of error in terms of MAPE is the XGBoost, but this is uh, applicable for the installation, solar PV installations in Davao del Norte. So the MAP is 9.424. And this is uh, way uh, higher no, in, in terms of the uh, expected uh, MAPE values or threshold for the MAPE value for uh, as mandated by our uh, WESEM. So uh, we have, according to WESEM standards, uh, at least 18% is the MAPE. So lower than 18%, the absolute value is better. So we can see all the models have, has, have passed the, the said criteria. In terms of our WebGIS, the WebGIS part is the component of this project is very important because we have produced uh, a lot of uh, maps for solar PV resource potential as well as the uh, models for solar PV output uh, forecast. So the WebGIS will be a repository of data that uh, where, where uh, relevant stakeholders can access freely online. So these are some snapshots of uh, the WebGIS that we have already developed so far. So we have the following layers already available, the shortwave radiation product for the Philippines, uh, the adjusted shortwave radiation adjusted for the effects of clouds, uh, cell temperature, estimated cell temperature, uh, estimated temperature effects, dust effects, and the effective solar PV power resource potential for the country. The web GIS also hosts uh, the uh, different forecasting models that the project has developed. So you can, for example, uh, choose some uh, specific locations in the Philippines. The model, choose also a particular model for forecasting the uh, source of uh, solar radiation data. 
as well as uh, the output temporal resolution like hourly and uh, applicable year. So you can uh, have some graphs like here wherein we can see the forecasted uh, output for your solar PV installation. And to summarize uh, the accomplishment of the accomplishments of the project uh, as we end the second year, uh, we have already uh, published two journal publications. Uh, actually, uh, one has already been published online, so you can check it. Uh, just uh, last night, it was published online. The, the other one is still in press, so we're still uh, uh, waiting for it to be published uh, online. And then we have also participated and presented papers in seven international conferences. And one of those international conferences, the project has uh, received uh, been awarded the best best paper, particularly in the ACRS 2020 our Asian conference in remote sensing. We have also uh, produced uh, updated resource potential maps specifically for solar PV. Uh, research potential maps for the Philippines. Also, the WebGIS has already been developed, you no, know, but uh, there are still some fine refinements, you no, know, that or fine tuning that still has to be done. And uh, I've also conducted ten training workshops, uh, which has been uh, have been participated with two hundred uh, by two hundred twenty three participants. So these are training workshops that we conduct uh, every time we visit our partner institutions. So uh, we, we teach them you know, the models and even all the processes that the project has been, have been, uh, has been uh, doing you know, so that we can also transfer specific uh, skills and knowledge to our partner institutions. We have also accommodated uh, 21 data requests, mainly from uh, students who are doing research on uh, or related to solar PV resource potential. We have also hosted uh, interns for OJTs, uh, not only from uh, college students, but also from senior high school students, specifically from the Philippine Science High School. So from senior high school students, we have hosted five undergraduate students 16 and um, MS students 5. These are not only limited to OJTs and internship, but also uh, with, uh, in terms of data requests and consultation. These are some of our publications, the conferences and conferences and the journal uh, manuscripts for the solar path we are um, already processing you know, the, the first publication under solar path component. And hopefully uh, we can al already submit this before the month ends. And then for the out solar, uh, yeah, so we have two publications, so the journal publications under out solar, and we are on have ongoing internal review for the third uh, one. Conferences also, we have papers under OutSolar. So that's it. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions or if you want to know more about the project, please uh, visit our website, and which will be uh, sent to you by uh, chat, our uh, website. Thank you very much, and have a nice day. All right, thank you very much, Doc Art, for sharing the Project CNAG Year 2 accomplishments.